<laughs> it's not this. No. Oh God. No. <laughs> Breaker one night. No. I think I have. It's said not that this. On simplex. This is what I don't think it is. Some others may disagree. Okay. This reminds me of a story. <clears throat> and it definitely ain't this. It okay, it kind of is this. A lot. <laughs> 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 Wow. Like, like that guy. We used to have a program manager, and he was a oh. uh, he was a ham. And this was before I was into ham radio at all, uh -huh. was or anything. But his car looked about like that. I, and my cars never looked like. We'll show you this picture. Yep. I've seen that before. But my, they they actually banned him from driving on base. <laughs> Because they're like, we don't know what these antennas are, or what they're doing, or what they can pick up, but we don't want them. There's too many. I mean, it's obviously <laughs> it's a little over the top. When your car can be flipped upside down and walk away, <laughs> you might have too many antennas. Or you could just be into a lot of different radios. <laughs> so, uh, I was never like that. I never have. <laughs> two, two antennas max. <laughs> I'm Usually just one. Um, yeah, I, I've had way more than that. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, we've got a lot of, uh, the biggest thing the three of us perhaps have in common besides IT is that we're all amateur or ham radio operators. A lot of people think that's a dead hobby that no longer exists or it's for only for 80-year-old men. Sometimes it both not. exists and is definitely for 80-year-old men. <laughs> but, <laughs> but It's also for anyone um, else who wants to have fun. In, in the three of us, as far as the hobby goes, were licensed relatively young, especially Nathan and I. I think I was licensed uh, just before I turned 16. And Nathan wasn't too far ahead of that, I don't age, think. Yeah, so, age-wise, yeah. you beat me by <laughs> three years. Yeah, that's not and That's very young to be it's a teenager, bad. yeah. I did not license yeah. young. No, but uh, in this hobby, licensing in your 30s is still young, obviously. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, sadly um, sure. enough, the average, what's the average yeah. age now, a ham, something like 65 or something. Yes, like I can see it's that. growing. Uh, so we, we, all, we are uh, the young whippersnappers of our true. group. Which is really funny, yeah. <laughs> so we all, we all kind of identify with our call signs. So in that world, I'm Tim KB9SNL, Kilo Bravo 9, Sierra November Lima. Look at that. I know mm. phonetics. There you go. Hey, yeah. been in the I'm Nathan, Kilo Bravo 9, Golf Mike Uniform. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> I'm Justin, Kilo Delta 9, oh, he's India Golf Tango. Delta. Kilo Delta, he's so young. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're yeah. still 19s in the years when we were licensed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm knocking the table loser. That's why I have to use a folding table. I'll get a better one later. It's just, uh, this was quick. <laughs> but uh, ham radio, a lot of people are like, well, that's not useful. It's, you have Skype and cell phones now. And I, and I, and I challenge that it's, not useful. It's useful in very rare scenarios, but it's yeah. mostly for fun today, and that's why mo the three of us really do with it most it's of the a, time. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> well, there's the, there's the fun side of it, which is a lot of fun. It really, honestly, is things like fox hunting, which is a radio transmitter. Hunt, oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Um, is uh, and then things like um, um, contesting, where you're trying to contact distant. Yeah. Uh, countries or, or uh, work hard all to get to states, yeah, work all states, like work all counties, is mm -hmm. no. Um, and there's there's national U.S. national, well U.S. and Canada national, excuse me, mm -hmm. uh, contests specifically are called field day. But then there's yes. work. Uh, there's a work. It's a work band. No, it's the um, um, CQ worldwide. There we go. Yes. Um, CQWW. So and 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 that's. Yeah, it's worldwide, literally. DX Century with uh, ARRLs will work 100 countries, confirm. Yep. Confirm meaning that they, you make, there used to be QSL cards, there's ways to do it on the, the internet today, where the other station confirms the time and the band that you made the contact on back to you, either with a postcard or via, via these uh, online means to qualify for these awards. You can't just say, hey, I work these 100 countries, you got to have proof in that way. Yeah. <laughs> and I have actually some PSL cards back when they were still doing that. And, of course, now they do it through online. And, yep. you know, it's, there's a database for it. I really just got into this since 2016, and I've gotten several cards, just people that enjoy doing that, probably four yeah. or five, including one from Cuba. Well, that's, that's a special really event nice. station. I got yeah. one from Australia. Yeah. That was cool because I, I worked a guy on 10 meters back, uh, in, the, you know, back in college, actually. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I was amazed that the guy sent me. And it was a really neat QSL card because it was more like a postcard that he had, like, modified. Oh, cool. It was actually really beautiful. Yeah. Um, and I've got, I've got, I've got those cards somewhere. I'll find them. If I find a picture of it, I'll put one up now. But, um, 
if not, I'll, I'll get a generic one. You can obviously go and like Wikipedia and get some of this information sure. too. But uh, the AWRL is a good place to go for that. It used mm-hmm. to be Radio Shack. It carried a lot of books on this. Really, really Radio Shack's gone now. Yeah. Uh, if there's a ham radio store near you, mm-hmm. um, there aren't many. But there go are to it before it closes. <laughs> yeah, go to it before it closes. Yeah, um, but there there aren't many. But Thanks, Internet. They're usually pretty big <laughs> ones, but. But you can go, Gordon West has books on this, mm-hmm. um, who is a big, famous ham. Um, and then ARRL has its own. There have been a lot of neat things, like uh, like one of the stories we had from, from a couple episodes, would be at this point, go, uh, talking about ham radio on the on the space shuttle when it for, was first allowed. Yeah. And there's ham mm-hmm. radio on the space station now. Absolutely. Um, I've picked that up in the last six months. Yeah, and that's actually doing really SSTV. I, I didn't decode it, but I was able to hear the signals. Yeah. Yeah. So see if I could hear it. And there it was. Yeah. Same S- in my car. Yeah, <laughs> and SSTV is slow scan television, so it's like one picture. It's basically sending pictures. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's and more like speed. Sending, yeah, yeah, very low speed. Very, audio. very popular in the 1970s and 80s. But um, they do have fast scan TV. So yeah. this. Oh yeah. Uh, Nathan's uh, only one of us that's dabbled in this in the past. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I've paid money for this stuff. All right, so this it's got here. some heft to it. It's got some heft to it. It's, hopefully, that's working. Right? Yeah. Okay. So anyway, um, if not, I'll I'll see if I can close a picture. Of this. But this is a fast scan amateur transmitter. So uh, for TV, so it actually has it has audio and video in um, out to TV. So you can hook your regular television to it, like Channel 3, I think it's mm-hmm. what actually Channel 3 or Channel 4. It's got an um, antenna out to hook to your actual ham antenna. It's 440 megahertz unit. It takes 12 volts in, but you've got old-style camera power. You can oh, yeah. switch between video and camera. So the camera that, I don't know if it's offset, no, it's, is that, no, it's stable. The, the big broadcast camera I have sitting over there oh, yeah. actually hooks to this quite easily. But you can receive, have a separate receive transmit. You can do a VFO or just a crystal transmit. And I even has pushed to talk to the old people. Sure, yeah. Um, but this actually works quite well. I've heard that brand. This. I haven't seen it in years. AEA? Yeah. Yeah, AEA. Yeah. yeah. And this one, it still works quite well. It's it's big. It only puts out like a one watt. But I have a couple amplifiers up here. The, uh, oh, yeah. the top one there, which I'll get a picture of later. But the top one there is, um, I widened the bandwidth on it. So it would work yeah. with this, even though it's 150 watt out, I think it is. No, 100 watt out. It only really does about 40 because the bandwidth is really wide. It's a 6, six megahertz. megahertz yeah. yeah. It's, um, it's most commonly done on high amateur radio bands in UHF, such as 70 centimeters, which is 420 to 450 megahertz. Yeah. So to uh, put that in comparison, most of <clears throat> what is ham FM? 2.5? Hertz or kilohertz wide or something, and that's a fraction of six megahertz. So yeah, and <laughs> for regular voice comms, so it's you know yeah, and it's, your voice comms are like this, and the yeah is that wide for the oh, AT- yeah. ATV. So, so you get you know it just takes a lot of spectrum because your your video and there's there's thousands of videos out on the internet right now explaining how TV works and all that kind of stuff. And in the amateur radio world, the amateur television side of that uh, fundamentally is identical. It, it, it really works the exact same way that any, like, you know, your standard back when it was not HD, your standard broadcast will work. Now, as far as I know, at today, right now, there's still not any, like, other than experimental, um, HD for ham radio. Not that I know of. No. There's still uh, analog ATV uh, being done in some areas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So not about not, in our area. The, 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 <coughs> we used to, right? Yeah. We used to have, we actually used to have a repeater home built. It was hilarious. Like, <laughs> they used a vacuum tube transmitter that we dug that's out cool. of. I got one dumpster. We figured that thing or a dump, pulled that thing out of it. And it had a beta, a beta max VCR as the receiver. <laughs> sure, yeah. Put um, a tuner on it. And we used the tuner. Yeah. Um, I don't, I, you know, I honestly I want to check that. If I'll, if there is, I'll put a, uh, some kind of information correction on here. But I have not found any of that stuff yet that's yeah. that's HD. It would be neat, but HD takes a lot more space. Yeah. Well, I didn't know if the bandwidth was wider on that or not. I really I don't, don't know. A little more. Yeah. It's, um, they can do a, carry know. a lot more on the signal though via the digital means. Yeah. So, well, yeah, because it's channels basically. Yeah, it, so. it's compressed and everything. It's it's all really compressed video. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> I will check that. I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm curious. Know. Get back on that. Yeah, I'll, I'll get back on that. But, you know, 
ham radio is many things. Some people get carried away with certain things. Ham radio is not this or this. Some guys like to chase storms. This is what this is all about. And uh, sometimes it is this, but we hope we're not. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. But ham radio can be, has been used for, and, and is is very effective use for emergency communications, mm -hmm. uh, mainly because hams are, I wouldn't say like survivalists, although there definitely are some. Mm -hmm. They're resourceful. They're, they're resourceful. <laughs> but we, we know how to keep our equipment running even if there's no power. Sure. We have solar panels. We have hand generators. There's a lot of ways to get the stuff to work. And a oh, lot yeah. of those are required the power level mm -hmm. that some of the other equipment does. Um, so... Katrina is a real great example of oh, that. Oh man, that was some of the. That was probably in our generation the one. There's been a few, but in our generation recently, that was the biggest mainland U.S. Uh, incident oh, yeah. where amateur radio was honestly in play. Yeah, um, it was those guys they they took solar panels with them to the dome, put the solar panels on the roof so they had power yeah. to generate to to charge batteries with, and they ran <coughs> radio. I've actually well got an audio recording time. somewhere. Maybe we can toss in here. That's it's not very long of people passing traffic during Hurricane Katrina on. Uh, yeah, forty meters. I yeah. think it was yeah. really, really something to hear. I didn't participate, but I listened. Yeah, um, and even recently, yeah. the uh, what was it the recent hurricane that hit, uh, hit Puerto Rico? Hit Puerto Rico. Yeah. yeah, they had there was ham radio, a lot of ham radio traffic with that one. Um, so ham radio, that's one very, I would call it um, specific, but mm -hmm. a very, very, a very, very high and nice yeah. use for ham radio because of the equipment. Now, of course, it's also done as for fun. Absolutely, uh, but it is the only. In the United States, the only federally licensed hobby. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I thought that was kind of neat because right. you have to have a license to actually do yeah. it. Not to receive it, no. but to transmit, you actually have to have a license, which is not that hard to get. Yeah. There's it's three uh, levels there's technician, general, and amateur extra. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I believe, as a matter of fact, uh, are you both we extra? all three, and, uh, I think, are you a general? I'm a general. I'm, I'm an right. extra. I, I, yeah. uh, and Nathan is a technician. We're all at different levels. Yeah, I, Justin, Justin. Justin. What did I say? You said Nathan. Nathan is. We're going to go three You're stooges a on a block. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> um, yeah. Last November, it was uh, would, was coming up on my twentieth year of the hobby. Last year, I was licensed in nineteen ninety eight, and uh, I decided I'd try for extra. So I studied for it in the fall of twenty seventeen and passed. So I was pretty excited. That was a very of the three. That's that one's hard. <laughs> Yeah, was, it took a me. Harder. I yeah. put a good month of study into that and reading the book and taking the practice exams mm -hmm. before I felt confident to go test. So no doubt. That was, when, <laughs> when I was done, I only missed four, so I was pretty happy. Oh, so, that was pretty good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I looked at it and tried once. Yeah. I hadn't really done the reading I need to. Yeah. And, and I, didn't pass I was it. happy as a general, and I was a general from 05 until last year, or until 2017. And yeah. I did everything I needed, and I thought, oh, I just think I'd like to be an extra. <laughs> it's more of an achievement yeah. than a, well, I want these frequencies or whatever. As so. an extra, you can get. <laughs> You can be a, a BE. Yes. Uh, a BE a is a things. volunteer examiner who it's kind of a volunteer program yeah. where other hams grade the tests and turn them in so that you can be licensed. So I hear they're not issuing licenses right now during the government shutdown, or they will be shortly not doing that. The FCC oh, that's sad. I thought that was something. That's kind of unfortunate. If you pass your test now, you may have to wait. That, <laughs> so that would be terrible. Yeah, because we're in the middle of a government shutdown yeah, right at this now, time, anyway. So, sort of, sort of, that would be awful yeah. because I, <clears throat> when I took my test, I'm like I was stalking the, the sure. website like. Oh, yeah. Hourly, I would refresh it. Now, this oh, guy, yeah. there's two people in my life I've met on the radio just straight up before I met them in person, and Justin is one of them. He. Uh, he was ready to go. He had a mobile radio. Most guys start with a little handheld radio, which there's several of those around here. Mm -hmm. You know, something like this thing. maybe, and <clears throat> you know, and yeah. and that's where they start out. But Justin, he he bought a nice mobile radio, and I'm throw my uh, call sign out on the local repeater, which at the time was in very low use. So just kind of ebb and flow in local areas. How many people yeah. get on the radio? And nobody had been on our repeater much at all for general conversation uh, for some time. And I throw my call out, and I hear this. KD9 IGT. I'm like, wow, that's a No, it was more like K D nine. Um <laughs> Well, you said it in such a way that I thought, well, I, here's a guy that's been on the radio for a while. He had been licensed mere hours. <laughs> he had oh, discovered yeah. his call sign that afternoon. Or something. <laughs> so, <laughs> I remember that because I told you, well, you're my first contact, and you yeah. came back and you're like, first contact ever? Yeah, I was excited. <laughs> I liked that. I was, I was like, all right, I do it. I can make enjoy the hobby. And somehow I kept him on the radio, and that's been a good two years almost. So, yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, because I've been on there since '91, mm-hmm. which is really funny because the FCC site doesn't show that; it shows like the last, the last time, time you upgraded. Oh, yeah. But uh, yeah, '91. I still have the license somewhere, but it's because yeah, uh, mine renewed last May or something. So mm, yeah, <laughs> so I've a few years left of mine. But, yeah, it's a because I I've been in it long enough, like just barely. I get my initial license. It was the novice because it used to be novice tech, general, advanced, extra, and then they switched to novice tech, tech plus. Yes. So if you had your novice and you went to tech, you were then tech plus, which meant you had code. And then there was general and advanced, right? General, advanced, and extra, extra. Yeah. And then so I have my novice first. My this is my actual novice call sign. Sure. It still is. I yeah. Remember. Sure. Changed it. Yeah. Later so I got my no code yeah. tech call. Yeah, a few years later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but then I became a tech, and then several years later, I decided to move to uh, to a general. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just, and of course, at this point now, there's just the three classes. There's just tech, general, and extra. But yeah. uh, until 2007, I think it was, you had to pass a uh, Morse code exam for uh, anything above uh, no code technician. Yeah. Which was just technician by the year 2000, I think. I got. I tested in the novice. I had to take both the novice written and the technician written to get my no code tech in '98. Yeah. In 2000s, when they did away with that, went to the three class system. So, yeah. um, which was it, it, yeah. as, as much as a lot of people are like, oh, code, we've got to have code. No, no one uses code, really. So, I mean, people who used, are very fond of it use it, but generally mm-hmm. your hams yeah, that you run into that you meet yeah, are, may not be code guys. Of course, I say that when there's several guys at club who can blow me away. There are. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, yeah, there's. there's what? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we have a few guys in our local club who, yeah. who, are, who are very dedicated to go, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Right. But it is it is not used for actual emergency communication. No, it's not. Not at all. Uh, not even by the military. It is, so. Yeah, it is used by the uh, enjoyment part of the hobby, not mm-hmm. at, not by any yeah. of the actual technical requirement anymore. I mean, honestly, even, even though the bands are split with code at the bottom and everything else, but sure. it's, you know, and everything else higher up. But... The code sections have also been absorbed into, or have been used, or you know, or have absorbed, I should say, um, all the di- uh, that stuff. Did, yes, so all the digital modes yeah. are out there, and there's a, there's a yeah, bloody there's some, uh, billion of those. I swear. <laughs> there's um, there's some some that have become sure. very popular in the last two years. I started out on a mode called JT65, which JT65, was only invented yeah. in 2003 after I was licensed. Yeah, and it. Uh, We'll probably do something on that in the future, but it's since evolved into an even faster mode of the same called FT8, and it is wildly popular. I would venture that seventy percent of the people on HF today are using that versus voice. Even I mean, it's yeah. that popular. So <laughs> well, and it, some of these really crazy, crazy fast ones have a real fun thing. So there's a mode in ham radio called meter scatter, mm-hmm. where they're literally transmitting on the the burning, you know, disintegrating orbit of a meteor. <laughs> to to reflect true. the signal off of it, yeah. or, or they're also doing the same idea off the the northern lights or the the, the mm-hmm. uh, all that kind of stuff. So though, so these these reflections are like blip long. I mean, they're they're what hundred maybe yeah. uh, probably maybe a sixtieth of a second long yeah. at most. So these data communications are like you know just. Is you just it's true. A lot of these modes originated in that sort of thing versus HF where they've gotten popular. Yeah, they started out for that. And still yeah. are for that. <laughs> yeah, but they they allow you to do very 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 fast communication. Oh, you yeah. can do like a, a QSO, which is a two party communication. Hi, hello, you know, it's simple basic stuff back and forth in like less than a second. Mm-hmm. So that kind of mode works great for that kind of stuff. You know, which which is awesome to do. Oh, yeah. And I watched a guy do this. We had a uh, was it Rick? I think I think it was Rick that was demonstrating at our club. Anyway. So he was showing the thing off, and he had recorded and played back a section. He's like, "You hear that pop sound in there? That was the, that was the actual data burst." And you're like, God, "What? Yeah, really?" It something. Yeah, it was <laughs> it was like just instant. You know, like you didn't even notice it was there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I mean, there's some really old modes like Riddy. Riddy is yeah. Riddy is exceedingly old. That yeah, goes back to teletype world. I yeah, mean, it's it basically printed out on mechanical machines on paper tape or oh, yeah. on paper that. Like a typewriter, and now today you can decode with a computer. Yeah, and you can sit there and see it, and you know the modern stuff has the, the waterfall spectrum analyzer mm-hmm. thing, which you can download audio ones that look the same way. But you can sit there and see ready where yeah. you can bop back and forth. That's <laughs> that's pretty neat to see. And some of the new radios, everyone always thinks ham hey, radio like the radios are like really really old, like uh-huh. like the one down there, which I'll I'll get a picture of and show sure, you. Sure, absolutely. Something. But it's it's a 1955 Collins R390. It's a receiver. It is stunning. What a, what a beast is that? And it's got like 100 <laughs> vacuum tubes in it. But the modern radios, 
are not like that. I mean, the radio I have over here has you know a nice display on it, but frankly, there's some newer ones out there now. If you get if you look around, uh, three major, not the only, but the three major brands are Kenwood, Yezu, and Icom. Yacom Wood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yacom Wood. Yeah. Um, and they all have, and, and there's others too, but uh, especially you know the the proliferation of Chinese Japanese radios, three. You know, the, Jap- big the big big yeah. Japanese three. Um, and there's um, there's there are many others. And there's even some that are uh, more U.S. based with yep. the uh, the Cantron, not Cantron, uh, Tentec for years. Well, oh, Tentec still, still around. Yeah. Oh, Tentec's still around. Yeah. Um, so is the uh, um, K line. Helicraft. Yeah. Helicraft. Yeah. 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 Uh, but they, yeah, and Helicraft in their system has that waterfall spectrum yes. analyzer on the screen, mm-hmm. and so does the new uh, Yezu, I think, which came out in the QST. QST is the magazine, and the ICOM uh, IC7300 is huge right now, and it's probably the oh, slickest. Yeah. It has uh, all of that, and it's an SDR based receive and transmit, which is, was a print industry first. So, yeah, yeah, and, you know, using computer technology to receive versus the conventional. Super heterodyne circuitry. So. Oh yeah, and yeah. you know, and, and to think that I mean, it's really kind of neat because it looks like they took the iPad and just absolutely, put it yeah. And and that is, so, in fact, there are radios that use the iPad as the screen. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's, yeah. you know, that's a total you know, technology yeah. integration. Most people always think ham radio; they think these really, really ancient yeah. things, and those do still exist. And, and some guys really enjoy that. But. Mm-hmm. They're really, yeah, some of it's really neat to try and make some, some of the most cutting edge electronics you'll find are an amateur radio today, still in 2018, yeah. 19. It's 2019 now. Yeah, it is, yeah. <laughs> well, what's I mean, the old saying? Real radios glow. Yeah, yeah real radios glow. Some of them bad opinions. Some of them glow <laughs> because they have awesome screens and waterfalls. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Well, the neat that I, I still find it funny is funny. So there's two technology or two groups in the world that still use vacuum tubes on a daily basis. One is ham radio for some of the older guys who mm-hmm. like some of the older stuff. And I actually enjoy some of the older stuff. Just think, oh, see yeah. it actually. Yeah. I need to hear room with it. So, you know, we are three old tech dudes. Uh, right? <laughs> they call it our 390s. I used to run that in my apartment. See, I didn't know you. Oh, is that the one you is heated that the your one apartment you, with? That's the thing <laughs> I heat the apartment with. He's told some great stories on the radio about <laughs> yeah, hitting his yeah. apartment with the Collins. So. Yeah. And, 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 and 100 vacuum tubes in a single room, that would do mm-hmm. it. Too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, but the other one is, is uh, guitar amps. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Very much. Yeah. They they still. I mean, those guys. You know, yeah. they, and and mm-hmm. I work on some of that stuff too. Many shortwave guys, broadcasters still use those transmitters because they're about the only thing that can generate that much power. Yeah, and, and so uh, in a stable your, form. Yeah, yeah most of your local of, broadcast stations are solid state transmitters, meaning uh, integrated circuits versus tubes. Yeah, but, like big bolted yeah. transistors rather than vacuum. So there the are many vacuum? stations still using large tube transmitters. Well, vacuum tubes stations. actually yeah. have one in a very high power world. They have a very big advantage. Big advantage is if you get hit by lightning, they'll usually survive it. That's true. Mm. Yeah. They may yeah. not, the facility may not be in good shape, but yeah. they'll still work. You have to repair a, a few things. <laughs> yeah, you may have for other parts that fail, <laughs> but the main part, the main, you know, like the main output device, will usually continue to function. Mm. Did not know that. Um, you know, it's yeah, it's pretty, and they're also not susceptible to EMP. Uh, did not know that. Either. EMP does That's not cool. hurt vacuum tubes. Wow. That's why your old, old, old radios. Mm-hmm. Will continue to work you know, after the apocalypse. Yeah, after the apocalypse. You know. So your radio and the cockroaches live. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, that's the thing, because like, cockroaches just running off. The apocalypse, off. everybody's coming to Nathan's basement to use the cockroaches. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We may have to work on a little while. <laughs> <laughs>